Hi, I'm Dr. Harch, and this is a talk I gave for the American College of Hyperbaric Medicine webinar on hyperbaric oxygen in COVID infection, what we know and what we don't know. And this is on the Chinese experience, uh, a little bit on operational details and protocols. Well, I, I think we need to put this all in perspective, and history bears remembering how this all began uh, was with the Spanish flu in 1918. And we had had discussions about this with my staff for a couple months, January and February of this year, and finally uh, uh, discussed this with an internet post. And what had happened in Spanish flu, the very first application of hyperbaric oxygen in the United States was Dr. Cunningham in Kansas City treating uh, patients with Spanish flu. And they were almost identically ill to our coronavirus patients, moribund, struggling to breathe, uh, hypoxic, meaning blue, um, and what he did was treat them with compressed air. Even with compressed air at just 1.68 atmosphere, he was able six eight atmospheres. He was able to revive these patients. Even if he went as high as four atmospheres of air, it's still only 0.84 atmospheres of oxygen. What it says is that there is some effect of pressure in addition to the oxygen. So we announced this on the internet to let people know that we could probably treat coronavirus just like they treated Spanish flu by hyperbaric oxygen and recommended that people start trying this and doing studies on it. Well, within 24 hours, we found the English translation of the Chinese manuscript on their five patients. And that precipitated an hour long interview with the treating doctors and then extensive communications over the next two months. And what they related was an identical experience to Dr. Cunningham, but they were completely unaware of Dr. Cunningham's experience. We put this information in front of Dr. Qu or, uh, excuse me, Governor Cuomo and Governor Edwards of Louisiana. Uh, they essentially demanded published uh, information, and uh, we tried to get this done in an English language publication of the Chinese data, but uh, it didn't happen, and it wasn't until last week that the Chinese articles were published. In the meantime, we put a commentary in medical gas research. So this is the experience of Dr. Zhang and Chen in Wuhan, China. And their first case report is a patient who is on a ventilator. So an endotracheally intubated patient, very sick. But they only did four hyperbaric treatments was all that was necessary at 1.6 atmospheres for 100 minutes. Now it looks in their flow chart that they may have also used 1.8 atmospheres. But the point is 1.6, 1.8 atmospheres, all it took was four treatments and these patient, or this patient was able to get off the ventilator and be discharged from the hospital. If you look at their graph before and after hyperbaric oxygen, these are the blood gas values. There isn't a dramatic change there. Nevertheless, they said the patient was deteriorating when they intervened and they were able to treat them. The second patient was the most severe of their five patient case series that followed. And this patient was not on a ventilator. What they did was treat the first treatment at two atmospheres for 90 minutes at depth in the chamber on what's called a BIBS apparatus, a built-in breathing apparatus in a multi-place chamber. The second through the eighth treatments also at two atmospheres, but for only 60 minutes at that pressure, similar BIBS. And this was the picture of the uh, blood oxygen levels and hyperbaric treatment began on 2-11, so February 11th. Well, by then, it looks like the patient had already started to improve, but made still with each treatment a dramatic improvement, and again, the successful outcome and discharge from the hospital. Well, this is their five patient series that was just published in a Chinese journal last week. All of them were failing mask therapy and they had a venti mask. So they only gave about 50% oxygen was what the maximum was. We usually use a non-rebreather mask that can get up to about 95 to 100%. But they ended up with an average of about four and a half hyperbaric treatments, once daily in a multi-place chamber. First treatment was at 1.6 atmospheres for 60 minutes, or excuse me, 90 minutes. And then all of the subsequent ones were for just 60 minutes at depth in the chamber. Same non-rebreather mask uh, in the chamber that we use. And uh, what they found was an increase in blood oxygen level, uh, lymphocyte counts, percent of lymphocytes, and a decrease in inflammatory markers such as fibrinogen and C-reactive protein. Simultaneously, there was improvement in the CT uh, evaluation of the lungs. So the general net effect was an improvement in low oxygen levels, repayment of the oxygen depth, 
improvement in the microcirculation and improvement in immune function. And of course, the patients improved. Here is a demographic, it's part of the demographic uh, composite table that I put together with the uh, treating Chinese doctors. And I've highlighted just the blood oxygen levels. This is the percent saturation, and that's the absolute level. And you can see these values are very low. On room air, people are at 98 to 99% oxygen here. These are on oxygen. And our normal blood levels of oxygen are in the 90s. You can see they're severely depressed. What this is, is a graph or a table of all five patients, and it shows that on average, they were on mask oxygen for 20, uh, 12 days before they intervened with the hyperbaric oxygen. Afterwards, they were on it for 1.4 days. Most of them were on nasal cannula oxygen before they proceeded to hospital discharge. This shows the daily blood oxygen level before the first treatment and then with each treatment. Here are the color codes for each patient and you can see that there's a day-to-day -day improvement in each one. So here is each morning right before the hyperbaric treatment. You can see the most severely ill one though had the least improvement on a day-to-day -day basis. It was also at the highest pressure, but eventually he also improved. This is the money graph. And what this shows is both the transient and the permanent effects of hyperbaric oxygen. So here's before going in the chamber each day, the oxygen saturation level in the blood, very low. Remember, we ought to be up here on just room air. They were on oxygen. Here is when they come out of the chamber after each treatment. And on a day-to-day -day basis, you have the transient effect, and then you have the permanent effect that accumulates to essential resolution and cure. Here are the CT scans of the lungs, top row before of all five patients, bottom row after. And you can see a clearing partially of these pneumonias uh, in every one of these CT scans. Not cured yet, but improved. Well, this is their cumulative experience. Overall, they treated 35 patients. The six that were very ill I just showed you, but they treated 29 lesser ill patients. Why? Not because they necessarily needed it, but these patients saw the sick uh, uh, COVID patients getting better so quickly with the hyperbaric oxygen, they went to the hospital administration and demanded treatment. The administration pressured the doctors to treat them, and all of them did well. Everybody discharged from the hospital, no complications, and no cross-infection of the hyperbaric staff. Here's a picture of the actual circulating staff, not the ones in the separate chamber that were ready to go in and intervene if there was a problem with the patients in the chamber at depth. They actually never did go in the chamber with them. But these are the ones who are circulating in the room and you can see they were practicing strict isolation and protection procedures. They also had uh, pathways for the infected patients versus the staff. Things were set up in a very uh, uh, isolated and protective way. The last thing I want to talk about was I wanted to point out this is not new. The acute respiratory distress syndrome was treated with hyperbaric oxygen first in animals, actually, by Dr. Rogotsky, and then in 2003 in Russia. And what they did this for were 45 patients who had blunt chest trauma. Uh, and 26 of them developed the acute respiratory distress syndrome within the first 48 to 72 hours. They divided them retrospectively into the group 18 of them that got no hyperbarics, and then eight of them that they did treat with hyperbarics, the first sign of ARDS, starting in the first 24 to 48 hours. And they only treated at 1.6 to two atmospheres for 40 to 60 minutes, once a day, four to 15 treatments, and look at the results. In group A without hyperbaric oxygen, 77% died. In group B, none of the eight died, 0% mortality. This last slide is just a picture of all of the trials, if you are, if you will, that are going on uh, internationally uh, in hyperbaric oxygen for coronavirus infection. These are the ones listed on clinicaltrials.gov. The highlighted ones are the ones that reported the dose that they're using, and you can see 1.6 atmospheres for 60 minutes. This is our protocol here in New Orleans, eight hyperbaric treatments. Uh, we have IRB. Uh, has reviewed this and essentially approved it. Our hospital, however, uh, is not allowing us to treat yet 
NYU is two atmospheres for 90 minutes, maximum of five treatments. Uh, in Sweden, it's 1.6 to 2.4 atmospheres, varied time at depth uh, for, it looks like a maximum of seven days. Um, and in Israel, it's 2.2 atmospheres for 60 minutes, eight treatments maximum in four days. And of different numbers of patients at each, most of these are randomized trials, only some of them are recruiting. So, congratulations to everybody who's been able to uh, start treating coronavirus patients with hyperbaric oxygen and initiate studies. Uh, this is something that needs to be done, and based on what happened 102 years ago, it's my conviction that this is going to be found to be a very effective and helpful treatment, particularly if the dose is kept in the lower range at 1.6 atmospheres and the time in the chamber is 60 minutes 